if you clicked on this video, you're probably confused because the NBA 2K21 demo is real. In two days, on August 24th, the NBA 2K21 demo will be here for the first time. And yet, many of you probably know very, very little about the build system and how builds are even gonna work in NBA 2K21. You probably have no idea on how you're gonna start up the game and what build you're even going to make. So if you wanna know for sure what builds are going to dominate NBA 2K21 and that you can make the very first day and save you tons of money and tons of VC, this is the video that you have been waiting for. So drop a like guys, and let's get right into the video. Yo, what's up guys, it is Power D back off another video. Now, before I get in the video and I explain everything I want you guys to know so you can have a successful, great build on NBA 2K21 right away, I wanna tell you a little bit about myself so you know the information I'm giving you guys is absolutely credible. I was a legend this year and I played over 15,000 games on NBA 2K20. And that build that I wrapped up on, that build that I was successful on playing at the end of the year, I made that build in the prelude of NBA 2K20 or the demo mode, whatever you guys wanna call it. I did the same thing in NBA 2K19 and I did the same thing in NBA 2K18. I've consistently made the correct builds and if you watch me, you know this is true. I've consistently made the correct builds immediately when the game has started. That's because there are some common principles of 2K where no matter how much the build system changes, no matter how much the little thing changes, these builds that I'm about to reveal to you guys in this video, they will always be good. So if you guys follow what I'm saying in this video, you will 100% guaranteed have some of the best builds in the game. Okay, so guys, the number one thing, and this is the, the things first I'm gonna break down that works, because I feel like that's what you guys are most interested in. You guys wanna know the builds and the strategies that are gonna work. The number one thing that always works, guys, and this has been consistent throughout the years, is the speed boost and build. And the build, you guys know what I mean by speed boost. And the speed boost and build that can shoot the best, and that's a very good shooter, will always be good. Now, normally, this is like the shoot and play making myth. So if you look back at 2K20, guys, um, the shoot and play making pie chart, like the play making shot creator, dominant. Literally dominant, but this is a, this is consistent, guys. If you look at 2K19, the sharp shooting playmaker, very dominant, very very good. If you look all the way back to 2K18, same thing. Look at 2K17 with the speed boost and sharp, completely dominant. Can shoot, can really speed boost. Look at 2K16, it's it's a complete pattern. The highest shooting rating that is able to speed boost at all is going to be for sure a good safe build. And it's probably gonna be a high quality build, one of the best builds in the game. So that's something that's, it's kinda, it should be kinda obvious, but at the same time, a lot of people don't really understand. And that's really something you should always go towards. Now, the number two thing is inside centers. Now, inside centers, I wanna explain to people because inside centers do work, but there's one thing you gotta understand about inside centers. Inside centers are gonna be always good, but they're always gonna be limited. And what I mean by like that is they're gonna have a high floor, which means they won't be too bad. They'll be like, okay, but they're gonna be limited where inside centers are pretty much never ever the best center build because it's always better to be a shooting center. So if you wanna make a build, another safe build, if you wanna make a build day one that you think is not gonna be terrible, you can make it inside center because they're always good at the beginning because people don't really know how to shoot. But the only catch about an inside center is you're gonna need a really, really good guard or you're gonna get clamped or you're gonna be terrible. But inside centers will always be an okay build to use. So that's number two. Number three, and this is the big thing that I think is gonna dominate this year. Shooting builds are always one of the best builds in the game and they're always super safe. You cannot go wrong with any build that can shoot. If you can shoot, you're good. If you can shoot, you're needed on any single team. Now, on this last year in NBA 2K20, shooting builds weren't as overpowered as they were in maybe previous years, but that's because you could shoot so well with these low shooting builds. You could shoot very good with a two-way slash and playmaker with a 68 three-pointer. You could shoot well with all these perimeter locks and paint beasts that literally have a 58-63 pointer. But what Mike Wang did say, and I'm gonna put the tweet up there, 
Mike Wayne, if you guys watch my news videos, you see he made a big emphasis on this year on two things. And this is what you need to know if you're making a build in NBA 2K20. Number one thing is that builds that have really low three point um, ratings will not be able to shoot this year, he said. And he said he will fix the game and make sure that those abilities and those builds aren't able to shoot at a high consistent rate. And then number two, he said, like an average shooter rating, like a 70, won't be able to shoot as good as a 99 three-pointer. So this is why I honestly think this is a um, kind of a big prediction I'm gonna make, but I think this is gonna be the year of high shooting builds. So I'm not gonna say you need a, a stretch or sharp with a 99 three-pointer, but if you can have like an 85, 93 pointer, I think that's gonna be a big advantage this year. And this might be the year where the the pure green builds, as they like to say, the, the high shooting builds will really stand out. So I suggest when you guys get look at the game, one of the first builds you try is a build worth high shooting. Because with how he made the shooting skill gap scene, that's gonna be such a big difference in the game. Next thing, guys, is the build that's always literally good is the tallest speed boosting builds are always good. And what I mean by that is if you can dribble and you're tall, height and, and that height and that dribbling ability is going to create an unstoppable combination. So if you look back this year, with the tallest um, build that could speed boost is really that playmaking glass. And that's why it took over. It was really unstoppable. The playmaking glass and 2K20 and 2K19 you even look at the point forwards that were really really tall and really really effective um 2k18 is literally the same thing the point forwards dominated 2k17 if you always look at whatever the tallest was would ever would it dominate so 17 it was 610 i think um 16 what was that six seven point guard whatever the tallest speed boosting build was that was always the build that everybody hopped on so if you can see yourself making like a playmaker any kind of playmaker and you can get as tall as possible then that's really always going to be a good safe build and especially if you like to dribble a lot you can iso people with that because if you go out there with this tall player trying to iso people nobody can defend you especially when you're going against those short guards that don't really have the ability like that so tall speed boosting builds always a safe bet guys out here for builds now a couple of other things i want to touch on versatile builds are always better than limited ones guys so if you can make a build that can shoot and play defense, a big build that's good at offense and defense, that's where you got the build like the two-way slash and playmaker last year that could do so many things. It can shoot, it can play defense, it can drive. If you can do a little bit of everything, that's always going to be more beneficial than someone's only good in one area, guys. So that's why if they have pie charts, the double pie charts were usually better than the just the single pie charts with one ability by themselves. And I, when you have two Hall of Fame badges, and the same thing with archetypes. The double archetypes were usually better than single archetypes. So if you can choose a build with multiple abilities and that's gonna have Hall of Fame badges in multiple areas, that's always gonna be better than just being really, really good in one area, guys. Okay, the next thing that um is really um important too is that two builds that will always be good, maybe they're probably not gonna be overpowered, but post scores will always be good. They've been good literally every single year, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16 they are just limited so you got to understand that if you're a post scorer you're really just a 1v1 player and you can play 2v2 but it's like you really just got post up the entire time so you need a specialized lineup and the same thing it's kind of like you're not going to get on the threes and be successful with a post score so you just be aware a post score can be good but you guys just got to know you can't really play all the courts you can't play everything they're going to be good in certain situations and the same thing kind of similar with lockdowns guys so lockdowns are especially useful later on in the game on the 3v3 core, even on the 2v2 core, but they're not really good builds like early on because they kind of struggle offensively until you figure out how to use them and how to shoot with them. So I wouldn't suggest making a lockdown day one, but if you get into the game, a lockdown will always be needed for teams and people with strong defense will always be well. But keep in mind, if you are making a lockdown, they're going to be probably be a little more limited than previous years because... Mike Wang did say two important badges for lockdowns are going to be nerfed this year, and that's Poco Stick and that's Intimidator. And that was a big reason that lockdowns were so overpowered in the past year. So just keep that in mind when you're making a lockdown. Are they going to be good? Yeah. But 
don't expect them to be a cheat code and if you don't know what you're doing i wouldn't make them the first day unless i would expect you to make like if you're gonna make a lockdown try to make like a do archetype lockdown because i feel like that's more safer because you're gonna make sure you have some offense in there i don't think a pure lockdown is gonna just be crazy offensively this year at least and then another thing um for physical charts if you're doing a physical chart you like the physicals speed is huge people with high speed used to be like they always tend to do well and even for this year they made speed matter a lot so centers were high speed had a huge huge advantage so you definitely want to look at speed and make sure you're not making a like a point guard with like 60 or 70 speed or a low speed or even a center that's very very slow so don't make super slow players now after i break down that those have those kind of things that have worked i want to break down some things that definitely don't work the guys so you guys can save your players so if you one thing you guys definitely should not do do not make the super short players so do not make a player ever 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 in any other <laughs> never in any circumstance make a player lower than six feet you can make a player six one six two but it should have very very high offensive stats like this player better be able to dunk and have a 93 pointer and it better be like 99 speed like it has to be super super high offensive ratings and it has to be able to dribble it should be able to speed boost dunk and shoot if you're making a sense once it's too low key like it has to be have so many different abilities it, it shouldn't be only good in like one area otherwise it has to be like an offensive demon because that's going to really hurt you defensively in that area Number two thing that I always tell people don't make is no minimum, minimum wingspan. Now, can you put your wingspan down? Yeah, but if you do minimum wingspan, you just make yourself such a defensive liability. It's like you literally cannot do anything on defense. And that's why a lot of people were struggling when they were getting isolated by these two-way slashing playmakers because it's like, bro, like you made a minimum wingspan player. Just know you're going to suck at defense if you make that. So I don't recommend doing that at all. So um, we're also going to break down um, kind of like how you want to make your player um and like um weight and wingspan what i recommend guys if your guards should be low weight inside centers should be high weight and then if you're a shooting center you got to balance it out like in the middle of how you want to do it but usually um centers can be like a little bit um higher weight but if you don't want to ruin anything but centers generally high weight guards low weight wingspan you want to do shorter wingspan not minimum guys shorter for dribblers and shooters when that's important to you just enough to get whatever rating you want and longer for defenders and rebounders so if you're making a lockdown or you're making a glass cleaner that obviously needs to have longer wingspan and if you're making like a a play shot then that can go down with the shorter wingspan but i don't recommend going shorter than you need for the ratings you want and if you can choose higher wingspan even on a guard bro because it's like the defense you're gonna be such an advantage in the way you can guard people and the way you can defend people with that guys so that's pretty much concludes most of it but what i do want to say guys is when you're making your bills look out for these things make sure you're looking out the positions guys don't just go in and just choose a position because a lot of times positions will actually affect especially this year a lot of your badges a lot of your attributes so pay attention okay if i make it this build at a point guard and a shooting guard what's the difference like look at those things it's pay attention to your badges pay attention okay does this rating take away badges from me does this rating um keep the badges the same does this rating give me more badges so ratings that might not be useful like a lot of people had free throw in their bills this year just because they need to hide more shooting badges so pay attention to how your ratings affect your badges obviously pay attention to your wingspan and your height because those are underrated things even if you have high ratings i always tell people if your wingspan is low but you have high defensive ratings you're still probably going to be terrible at defense and same thing with height just having height and wingspan will help you so much with defense it's those intangibles your weight too definitely helps you and can definitely affect different attributes and then takeovers guys pay attention to your takeover you choose the wrong takeover completely mess up a build choose a takeover that fits your player and fits your play style so if you don't fade this is common sense if you don't fade don't choose a shot creator takeover bro like choose a takeover that fits what you're trying to do don't just try to follow everybody else so i hope this video helped you guys let me know um give me some feedback um if you guys have any suggestions about what builds have worked well for you in the past or what principles um that you suggest to other people leave that in the comment section below but like this video subscribe if you guys are new and i am out